What's going on guys? It's Brandon back here again today for another BFR. Only three left today after this. Game 79 at Seattle Kraken at 9 o'clock p.m. on April 8th. Would start a pretty pretty newsworthy day of events. And by start, I mean kind of end. So Seattle ends up winning 7-3 to three, as every time these teams meet it's a shootout. The record, Hawks dropped 25-48-6. and six. Wagner and Tenorti, Kaiser were all in. Anglin, Mitchell, and Radish were out. Radish out with injury. He likely will not return for the rest of the season. Shots were 31 to 29 Seattle. Hits were 17 15 Seattle. Faceoffs 36 26 Chicago. Power plays both go one for three. Um, Mrazic saves 24 out of 31. Jones saves 15 out of 18 before being replaced by Grubauer, who saves 11 out of 11. We'll get to that. McDavid hits 150 points. He currently sits at 151. Crosby hit 1,500 points. Boston tied the consecutive wins record, or not consecutive, tied wins in a season record. I'm not sure where I got consecutive from, but ties wins in a season at 62. And then today, just now, um, not just now, a few hours ago now, defeated the Philadelphia Flyers to get their 63rd record-setting victory. No team in the NHL has ever done that. They now chase down the 19... 19- 77, 78 Montreal Canadiens, I think, or 76, 77, for most points in a season, in which they had, I think, 131 or 132, and Boston has two games to, to, to get that record for themselves. So as you can see the standings here, the most important thing, Chicago dropping below Anaheim. Anaheim gets a point, and they're uh, tied 2-2 going into the third period against Colorado right now. If Anaheim could pick up another point, that would be huge for the Chicago's run. And for Columbus, they need one point. And Chicago just needs to lose the rest of their games in regulation, and it's set. They would have the best odds at the number one pick. It is coming. It is going to go down to the wire here, just like some of these playoff spots. The, the, the race for last is just like the race for getting into the playoffs. We'll go to the first period, where Beneers to McCann missed, Gord is saved, but at 15-12, it's a Seattle goal to Ellie Tolvanen, his 18th of the season. He's been fantastic with Seattle ever since being claimed off waivers from Nashville. From, uh, if, you, if, you, if I sound weird, a little numbness going on in my mouth right now. Also, happy Easter to those who celebrate. Um, it's from Alexiak and Froden to make it one nothing. Athanasiu hits the post. Uh, 14-16 Chicago tic-tac-toe goal to Seth Jones, his 11th of the season from Athanasiu and Bjork to make it 1-1. Taze and Dickinson have a 2 on 0 that's saved. 11 5, Seattle scores again. It's a deflection goal from Jordan Everly, his 20th of the season, from Alexiak to make it 2 1. Alexiak with a, a big point now. He had three assists. That, that's two of them. Wagner then took a tumble. Uh, Bjorka Strand, uh, Beneers are both saved. 9 18, Seattle penalty to Alexiak for tripping, which would be killed. 531, Chicago penalty to Taze for tripping, which would be killed. And Taze was livid. It wasn't a good call. Tanev tripped over his own stick. Um, 2.30 then, it's a Chicago penalty to Seth Jones for tripping, which actually was a penalty. And with 51 seconds to go, Everly is robbed. However, he gets the second chance, uh, goes in on a deflection. It's Yanni Gord with his 13th of the season from Sprung and Everly to make it 3-1. We go to the second period where McCann hits the post early. Wenberg and Tolvanen are both saved. 13.22, Chicago penalty to Tenority for tripping, which would be killed. 10.52, Seattle penalty to Geeky for uh, holding. Um, and uh, Larson would be uh, not, Larson was also saved shorthanded. Uh, and then at 9:46, it's a Seattle penalty to Larson for tripping. And on the five, it's a five on three for 55 seconds. And at 9:20, it's a Chicago goal from Seth Jones on his 12th of the season, second of the game from Reichel and Athanasiu to make it 3-2. Uh, Kachuk would be saved uh, as it's a five on four for a minute and 36 seconds left. And the rest of that Larson penalty would be killed. Larson comes out of the box. And at 7:39, it's, it's a pass up ice from McCann, and Seattle. It's, it's a Seattle out of the box breakaway goal. My, my notes all over the place here. Um, so Larson gets the goal there. Adam Larson's eighth of the season on out, out of the box on a breakaway. Uh, those ones are tough. I remember one specifically from when I was younger. That's the one I first got. The wow, that actually worked pretty well. It was Brandon Sutter it was when, when when he was with the Carolina Hurricanes. I remember he did that against the Hawks. And I remember thinking, wow, why don't they do that more often? It's not, it's not always that easy. Um, but it's from McCann and Alexiak, so that's Alexiak's third point of the night to make it 4-2. Geeky has a big hit on Anderson. 
Um, and then at 6.44, it's a Seattle goal to Daniel Sprongs. That's a 55 seconds after the last one from Schultz to Sprongs, 21st of the season from Schultz to make it 5-2. And it was good stick positioning for Seattle. They were able to shut down any tr- attempt to, to get the Hawks, for the Hawks to get the puck out of the zone. Uh, and they were starting to get scrummy, and at 6.30, it's a Chicago and Seattle get coincidental penalties. Murphy and Dunn, Mur- uh, Murphy gets one for roughing, Dunn for cross-checking. And, uh, 4.58, it's a uh, Chicago deflection goal while on 4-on-4. Four four. Lucas Reichel, for the seventh of the season from Vlasic and Dickinson to make it 5-3. Uh, Geeky hits the post. Susie is stopped. Uh, Tanev is also stopped. And then at 3.14, it's a Chicago tic-tac-toe goal from Jujar Kara, which would have been his sixth of the season from Kachuk and Anderson. The Kraken challenge for offside, and it's no goal. If that goal counts, I think this is a lot closer of a game than is shown in the game, because that would have given the Hawks a whole bunch of momentum. They would have been within one, but luckily it did not. Kachuk is saved, Entwistle uh, and uh, Tolvin and both collide. Uh, we go to the third, where at 8.06, it's a Seattle one-timer snipe goal. Jared McCann's 39th of the season. He just might hit 40 from Bjorka Strand to make it 6-3 in McCann. What a story. He had a fantastic year last year with his first year with Seattle. And this guy was a guy who seemed no one wanted except Seattle. Penguins traded him to Toronto to avoid, some, uh, I think, uh, one of the players, since Toronto needed a player to sacrifice because they didn't want to give up Kerfoot. And now I'm pretty sure they'd love to give up Kerfoot for McCann. And, um, yeah, so McCann, um, he could have been a Maple Leaf. He could have been a Penguin longer. And now he's, Seattle's benefiting from their negligence to do the research on him, apparently. Uh, the Hawks were continuing to pressure, um, and uh, 509, Seattle one-timer goal to Morgan Geeky, his ninth of the season from Sprong and Donato to make it 7-3, which would conclude the game. Now, Grubauer is in to start the third, and according to stats, he came in at the like the last 10 seconds, last 12 seconds of the, of the second period. I'm not exactly sure what happened. I didn't even notice Grubauer was in until three minutes into the third period. So I was really confused. I'm like, wait a minute, why is Grubauer in the net when they're up by so much? I assume Jones must have an injury or something. And going into the playoffs, that is not what you want to have from your goaltending. Seattle, of course, now is two points behind L.A. for this last spot in the Pacific. I much prefer to see an L.A.-Edmonton first round because that would be a rematch of last year. I'd much love to see a Seattle-Vegas first round. However, Winnipeg right now would play Vegas and Seattle would play Colorado, and I don't think that's going to change. The point differential is too much for either the top, the, for either Colorado to get ahead or for Seattle to drop below. So it's just that's the way it's going to be. It looks like Seattle's just going to play the winner of the Central. Um, other changes, nothing much. Buffalo stays alive. Nashville's barely hanging on. And they're, I think those are the next two to drop out. And then uh, after that, we'll see Pittsburgh and Calgary and see if they can possibly get in. But if not, that's what's that's what it is. So that's really going to be all for you guys today. Last three games this week are on tomorrow, on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. So there will be BFRs probably on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then we get into all the the recap stuff, the Blackhawks season. we got to recap. we got to recap the power rankings through the last one of the year. we got to recap my standings from the start of the year and see where I went wrong, which was in a lot of places. Um, and of course, we have eight playoff series previews to do. I'm talking about a bit, bit of all this in the last video, but you get the gist of how many videos are going to be starting to come out, and I'm going to be exhausted by the end of it. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I shall see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.